Leviathan, or the matter, for me and power of a commonwealth, ecclesiastical and civil. Book by Thomas Hobbes. Narrated by Andrew. Originally published in 1651. This is a great audiobook production, created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 17. Of the Causes, Generation, and Definition of a Commonwealth. The End of Commonwealth, Particular Security. The final cause, end, or design of men, who naturally love liberty and dominion over others, in the introduction of that restraint upon themselves, in which we see them live in commonwealths, is the foresight of their own preservation and of a more contented life thereby. That is to say, of getting themselves out from that miserable condition of war, which is necessarily consequent, as hath been shown, to the natural passions of men. When there is no visible power to keep them in awe, and tie them by fear of punishment to the performance of their covenants, and observation of these laws of nature set down in the fourteenth and fifteenth chapters, which is not to be had from the law of nature. For the laws of nature, as justice, equity, modesty, mercy, and, in summy, doing to others, as we would be done to, if themselves, without the terror of some power, to cause them to be observed, are contrary to our natural passions that carry us to partiality, pride, revenge, and the like. And covenants, without the sword, are but words, and of no strength to secure a man at all. Therefore notwithstanding the laws of nature, which every one hath then kept, when he has the will to keep them, when he can do it safely, if there be no power erected, are not great enough for our security. Every man will and may lawfully rely on his own strength and art, for caution against all other men. And in all places, where men have lived by small families, to rob and spoil one another, has been a trade, and so far a from being reputed against the law of nature. That the greater spoils they gained, the greater was their honor, and men observed no other laws therein, but the laws of honor. That is, to abstain from cruelty, leaving to men their lives and instruments of husbandry. And as small families did then. So now do cities and kingdoms which are but greater families, for their own security, enlarge their dominions, upon all pretenses of danger and fear of invasion or assistance that may be given to invaders, endeavor as much as they can, to subdue, or weaken their neighbors, by open force, and secret arts, for one of other caution, justly, and are remembered for it in after ages with honor, nor from the conjunction of a few men or families, nor is it the joining together of a small number of men, that gives them this security, because in small numbers, small additions on the one side or the other, make the advantage of strength so great, as is sufficient to carry the victory, and therefore gives encouragement to an invasion. The multitude sufficient to confide in for our security is not determined by any certain number, but by comparison with the enemy we fear, and is then sufficient, when the odds of the enemy is not of so visible and conspicuous moment, to determine the event of war, as to move him to attempt, nor from a great multitude, unless directed by one judgment, and be there never so great a multitude. Yet if their actions be directed according to their particular judgments and particular appetites, they can expect thereby no defense nor protection, neither against a common enemy, nor against the injuries of one another. For being distracted in opinions concerning the best use and application of their strength, they do not help, but hinder one another, and reduce their strength by mutual opposition to nothing, whereby they are easily, not only subdued by a very few that agree together. But also when there is no common enemy, they make war upon each other, for their particular interests. For if we could suppose a great multitude of men to consent in the observation of justice and other laws of nature, without a common power to keep them all in awe, we might as well suppose all mankind to do the same, and then there neither would be nor need to be any civil government or commonwealth at all, because there would be peace without subjection. And that continually. Nor is it enough for the security which men desire should last all the time of their life, that they be governed, and directed by one judgment, for a limited time, as in one battel, or one war. For though they obtain a victory by their unanimous endeavor against a foreign enemy, yet afterwards, when either they have no common enemy, or he that by one part is held for an enemy, is by another part held for a friend, they must needs by the difference of their interests dissolve, and fall again into a war amongst themselves. 
why certain creatures without reason or speech do nevertheless live in society without any coercive power. It is true that certain living creatures, as bees and ants, live sociably one with another, which are therefore by Aristotle numbered amongst political creatures, and yet have no other direction than their particular judgments and appetites, nor speech, whereby one of them can signify to another what he thinks expedient for the common benefit, and therefore some man may perhaps desire to know why mankind cannot do the same. To which I answer, first, that men are continually in competition for honor and dignity, which these creatures are not, and consequently amongst men there are a seth on that ground, envy and hatred, and finally war. But amongst these not so. Secondly, that amongst these creatures, the common good differeth not from the private, and being by nature inclined to their private, they procure thereby the common benefit. But man, whose joy consisteth in comparing himself with other men, can relish nothing but what is imminent. Thirdly, that these creatures, having not, as man, the use of reason, do not see, nor think they see any fault in the administration of their common business. Whereas amongst men, there are very many that think themselves wiser and abler to govern the public better than the rest. And these strive to reform and innovate, one this way, another that way, and thereby bring it into distraction and civil war. Fourthly, that these creatures, though they have some use of voice, and making known to one another their desires and other affections. Yet they want that art of words, by which some men can represent to others that which is good in the likeness of evil, and evil in the likeness of good, and augment, or diminish the apparent greatness of good and evil, discontenting men, and troubling their peace at their pleasure. Fifthly, irrational creatures cannot distinguish between injury and damage. And therefore as long as they be at ease, they are not offended with their fellows, whereas man is then most troublesome when he is most at ease. For then it is that he loves to shew his wisdom and control the actions of them that govern the commonwealth. Lastly, the agreement of these creatures is natural. That of men is by covenant only, which is artificial, and therefore it is no wonder if there be somewhat else required, besides covenant, to make their agreement constant and lasting. Which is a common power to keep them in awe and to direct their actions to the common benefit, the generation of a commonwealth. The only way to erect such a common power as may be able to defend them from the invasion of foreigners and the injuries of one another, and thereby to secure them in such sort. As that by their own industry and by the fruits of the earth, they may nourish themselves and live contentedly. Is to confer all their power and strength upon one man or upon one assembly of men that may reduce all their wills by plurality of voices unto one will. Which is as much as to say, to appoint one man, or assembly of men, to bear their person. And every one to own, and acknowledge himself to be author of whatsoever he that so beareth their person, shall act, or cause to be acted. In those things which concern the common peace and safe die, and therein to submit their wills, every one to his will, and their judgments to his judgment. This is more than consent, or concord. It is a real unity of them all, and one and the same person, made by covenant of every man with every man, in such manner, as if every man should say to every man, I authorize and give up my right of governing myself, to this man, or to this assembly of men, on this condition, that thou give up thy right to him, and authorize all his actions in like manner. This done, the multitude so united in one person is called the commonwealth in Latine Civitas. This is the generation of that great Leviathan, or rather, to speak more reverently, of that mortal God, to which we owe under the immortal God, our peace and defense. For by this authority, given him by every particular man in the commonwealth, he hath the use of so much power and strength conferred on him, that by terror thereof. He is in a blood to for me the wills of them all, to peace at home, and mutual aid against their enemies abroad. The Definition of a Commonwealth And in him consisteth the essence of the commonwealth, which to define it is one person, of whose acts a great multitude, by mutual covenants one with another, have made themselves every one the author. To the end he may use the strength and means of them all, as he shall think expedient, for their peace and common defense. Sovereign and subject, what? And he that carrieth this person is called sovereign, and said to have sovereign power, and every one besides is subject.
The attaining to this sovereign power is by two ways. One, by natural force, as when a man mocketh his children to submit themselves and their children to his government, as being able to destroy them if they refuse, or by war subdueth his enemies to his will, giving them their lives on that condition. The other is when men agree amongst themselves to submit to some man or assembly of men voluntarily on confidence to be protected by him against all others. This later may be called a political commonwealth or commonwealth by institution, and the former a commonwealth by acquisition. And first, I shall speak of a commonwealth by institution. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.